Welcome to Projects for All. My name is Mike and this is a Delta. <laughs> Did I say Delta? Jesus. Welcome to Projects for All. My name is Mike and this is a DeWalt DWE 7491 table saw. Belongs to a friend of mine. He's had it for about 10 years. He bought it, took it out of the box, put it together, remodeled his entire house with it. And it sits here today exactly in the same condition as it came out of the box, minus all that it used. So it's never been calibrated, it's never been checked. We're gonna do that. We're gonna go over all of its cool features and like this crazy long fence system. And we'll see if it's a good option for you. So if you own this saw and you have an opinion on it one way or the other, hit us up in the comments, let us know what you think of it and let's get to it. So let's start here on the front like we always do. You got your power switch. Same power switches on pretty much all of these saws. You got your on, you got your off, bump for off, and you got a lock that flips down with a hole in the side that feeds through. So you can lock this piece on here so all you can really press is off. So if you got weirdos on the job site or an orange cat you don't trust, you can lock it down. It snaps back into place. I don't know if that's a magnet in there or just a maybe a detent or something inside here, but there's your power switch. You got your blade up and down control and it's on a detent, so it doesn't lock. There's no locking knob on this, but it does kind of stay in each spot and it's not prone to moving on its own. You have your blade angle gauge here with the pointer right behind here. I don't think you can see it, but you have a locking lever for that. You just flip this sucker over and now you can swing the whole motor assembly back and forth and adjust. We're going to check the calibration on this. Lock it. You just put your knob back to the left there or your lever back to the left and nice and secure. It has a knob on the front for your rack and pinion fence system. It has a big tooth there so it stops. You don't really need to use this. I mean, you can for little tiny adjustments, but you can literally just pull it and push it back and forth. On the right side here, not a whole ton going on. You have this lever here, which is your fence lock. Towards you is unlock, and you can move your fence. And you have your blade guard. There is a lever back here that you flip up that unlocks this. There's a plate that squeezes down and you have your blade guard assembly looking like it has never been used once. Put it back, just stick it under there, back in the plate, flip the lever and supposedly secure. Not totally secure, but I don't think it's going anywhere. You're on the back side of the saw. You have the other side of your rack and pinion for your fence adjust. This is the lever I'm talking about for the blade guard. There's a plate here and this just tightens down that plate and holds it in place right here. You have a two and a half inch dust port. Metal, solid. It is cast into the housing that encloses the blade here. And I can just use my regular old two and a half inch adapter from my Delta saw or all my other power tools and it fits right on there. Underneath here you have the housing for your, that encloses your blade and you have this access cover right here. There's tabs, one up here and one in the back right there. I already undid them so I didn't have to stick my hairy arm in your face to reach back there and get that. But this comes down and comes off if you want it to. And there's your blade. You can clean out in here. You can check your arbor. This is really nice. This is helpful. You can see it's got molding on here to try and channel the dust to the port. And it just fits in two tabs on the bottom here. And then goes back into place. And it just pops right into place there. This is a nice idea, man. Really cool. This is the left side of the saw here. We have our miter gauge locked into back here. There's a bracket for it. It locks in good enough. 
it's a little wonky. Up here you can see the cable system for the riving knife. I'm going to show you that in a second. So now we're actually on the left side. There's the miter gauge there. You got a nice keeper for the cord. Works good. Two wrenches still right here by the cord. This is a little button. Push the button through. Lift up and you can pull your wrenches out. It's a little fidgety, but as long as they don't fall out of there, that's the point. Then they just slide back in here until the button contacts that hole. That's it. And then up here, you have this weird lever that comes out, snaps back. This is your riving knife release, and I'll show you that when we are on the top here. Here's a shot of the rolling stand, obviously a rolling stand model. Uh, this rolling stand is excellent. It's got a little bit of wiggle to it, but if you pull it out, it's not too bad. And man, it's stable. The legs sit nice and wide. Pretty happy with this rolling stand. I'll show you how it works. This saw is pretty heavy, but the rolling stand makes it pretty easy. Make sure your fence is locked so it's not moving around. Put your foot on a leg so it doesn't slide. I usually do the bottoms first. I don't know if there's really a rule one way or the other. But it's got these levers. You flip the levers up. And that's it. Ready to go. One-handed. It's a big saw, but it's pretty easy to move around. Flip out the legs. Stand it right up. So let's talk about the fence first. The fence, to get that super long reach, has two positions for the right side of the blade. It has this position here, and it has this one. This is for 32 and a half inches of rip, but if you bring it all the way in, it stops at eight inches because, well, I might as well just show you. To lock it, you got these levers, one on either side, and that locks it in place. But to have it on the longest reach, when you bring it all the way in, eight inches to the blade here is as close as you can get. If you want to go zero, or if you want to get it really close to the blade for a, a one inch cut or something, you put it on this one, and now you can bring it right to the blade. But if you have it on this position, your longest position here is 24 inches. So you get 24 inches of rip on this, this middle one. If you have it on the back one here, you get eight inches in to 32 and a half inches out. There are no slots or anything cut into the face of this fence. You can attach a sacrificial fence or anything like that. However, it is pretty thin, so you could easily clamp something to the top of it. It has a secondary fence. You just lift up and it flips around and it fits into two different positions. So if you have the fence over the table and you wanna cut something or rip something really small, you have a small secondary fence that's really stable and it fits right up against the main fence and gives you a stable place for small rip cuts. But it has a secondary feature also. If we have our fence off the table and we flip this around again we can put it in the lower position here and now it is the same level as the table so if we unlock it pull it up against there you can see so if we have this sucker way out there or in the other position and even farther you could support a large sheet across this whole table by having it on here why couldn't delta think of that I'm looking at you, Delta. So we have obviously our blade here and our riving knife back here. To get the riving knife out, you grab this lever, you pull it out, and the riving knife comes straight out. Put the riving knife back in, pull that lever back out, just fits in there. This is on a cable system, and man, it works really, really well. Factory throw plate, it's got a little latch. 
It is the most secure, least wobbling throat plate of any saw that I've used recently. It only has four adjustment points. There's two in the back here and two in the front. They are just regular Phillips head screws, which is awesome because you don't need to go and get, you know, an Allen key. It's got a latch so it doesn't fall off when you're moving the saw. Comes off. The screws for adjusting are on the, the throat plate itself. And then in here, not a lot to talk about. It's got this really nice aluminum cast housing. We saw it from the bottom side. 5 8 arbor. Can take a full dado stack. Badass, man. Simple is good. Comes with two wrenches for getting your blade out. They are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you have in which hand. You got the closed end for the outside, and then the open end for the inside, and that's it. Nice and simple. All right, so let's start checking this thing out. I got this zeroed out, the old Wixie. I have the angle knob or the angle adjustment set to exactly zero on the gauge. So we'll see where we're at. Almost. 90.3. So let's try and adjust it. These are not as easy to adjust as a saw with two knobs. So they're perfect 90. Confirm with that. Perfect. It's a little tough to see because it's behind there. But we'll use a three millimeter. Not as easy as it looks to adjust with one hand while you're in a weird position because you're cameras in the way so next we're going to check is the blade parallel with the miter slot once we check that we can check the fence also this miter slot has a little beveled edge and at the bevel it is exactly six and an eighth so we'll pivot this back so the blades in the same spot where we measure it and back here exactly six and an eighth on that bevel if this was out, if this blade was crooked, then there's an adjustment underneath. We'll have a quick look at that, even though we don't have to do that to this saw. So we're in the back of the saw here and right up under here. Six millimeter hex. There's two of them. You loosen these and you can adjust that blade parallel to the miter slot and then put it back. This is going to be a little tough to illustrate, but here's your riving knife and your blade. And I have the camera as straight as I can behind the blade. And you can totally see that it's very crooked. So I'll show you the adjustment points for this. All right, so we have our access cover off and our blade cranked all the way down. Just so I can show you this, this is the riving knife plate that holds it. You have all four millimeter hex here and here. And then you have three adjusting bolts, one on the bottom here and one here and one up here to pivot it. So you unlock these two, you can pivot it in two different angles. So is the fence parallel with the miter slot? There's your miter slot. This is gonna be really hard for you guys to see on camera, but you have almost no gap and almost no gap and it gets wider here. So either the fence is bent or the miter slot is off. And we'll get the straight edge and we'll check that out. There's a different view and I can see it looking straight down, but from that view on the viewfinder, I can't really see it. So we got our straight edge and four thousandths feeler gauge. And we'll just put even pressure And we're like four thousandths off in the center. So this fence is bent slightly. Whether that was from my buddy manhandling this thing or it came like that from the factory, you guys decide. But it is aligned. The ends are the same distance. So no adjustment is needed. To adjust the fence parallel to the blade, you literally just loosen this. These riding these tracks here and you can loosen this hex 
I think it's six millimeter and then slide it back and forth to where you need it to be and then reattach it. Keep in mind though, that this fence has three mounting positions. So you need to check all three. And on this saw, all three are dead nuts. This fence is also exactly perpendicular. Perfect. 10 years later out of the box, perfect. So I haven't found any way to adjust the fence perpendicular to the table. This one is perfect. So it sits on this piece of plastic that fits on this rail right here. Long piece of plastic up. It's all kind of one piece here. And then the metal part of the fence sits on that. So maybe it doesn't need an adjustment. This one doesn't eight years on. So it is what it is. So let's do a little sound comparison. We got the job site saw and we'll fire up the Delta from about the same distance and you can hear the difference in noise level. So here's the Delta 36725T2 from the same distance. Massive difference in noise. Super quiet, it's a big difference. So there's not much left to talk about except the miter gauge that says, there's a word printed on it. The old miter gauge says ABS. It was probably included because they had to include a miter gauge, but you know, you're on the job site, you got a lot of hand saws around and you know, I would grab a circular saw before I'd cross cut stuff on a table saw on a job site. That was me. You might be different. This is total garbage. This is from the same exact family or possibly even the same factory as the piece of junk that came with the Cobalt router table that uh, was a total failure. You can go look at that video. That video was a total joke. And we have exactly the same piece of junk here. By comparison, and I don't want to keep comparing this saw to the Delta because they are two different things, but this is the pound and a half all steel miter gauge that came with the Delta saw. There is plastic on it, but it is what I would consider for an included miter gauge, a pretty quality piece. This is all metal. Everything's metal, except for this knob. Cheap DeWalt. Not half bad for an included piece on the Delta. So, eh, it's a job site saw. I don't think too many people use this on a job site saw. You tell me. If you're a hobbyist who's gonna buy this saw for the space saving ability over something like a contractor saw, it has three quarter inch miter slots. Just like any other big saw, 7 16 deep, 3 quarter inch wide, pretty standard. You can get just about anything better than this for this if you are a hobbyist and you're going to build furniture or do something fancy with it. You got a lot of options on the market. So what we really have here is a saw that tries to be everything to everybody and does a really good job doing that. It's big when you need it to be big. It's small when you need it to be small. It's light enough for me to pick up the whole thing, put it in the truck. It's, it's a good saw. It's 15 amps. It's powerful. I didn't, I never saw it slow down. Just like the contractor saws, to me, this has the same power. The thing is, because I own a large contractor saw, there's no way I would go back to this. The table's small, the fence is small, it sits lower, it's a little bit fidgety. If I didn't need the portability, I could never justify going back to this. If I own this with its large rip capacity, I would really struggle to justify upgrading to a contractor saw. but. Because I've, I've owned a contractor saw for 
a few years, going back to a job site saw isn't something I would do. So if my situation changes and I need to go to the job site again, this is probably the saw I would buy. It's excellent. In almost every capacity, it's excellent. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you feel inclined, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. It really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching.